you have a set philosophy on life, but it's also kind of written in the Hawaii Rice Statutes. <laughs> yeah. And that's interesting because I didn't know this. A lot of people don't. share. Sure. Um, so I'll start with what my philosophy is kind of in life and how it's kind of filtered into my practice. But I always feel that if you give aloha, you will get aloha. Um, and, you know, just the background for that is that, you know, we all know what aloha is, but nobody ever really knew. I, well, a lot of people don't know that it's actually codified in statute. <laughs> so there's actually the Aloha Spirit Statute. It's Hawaii Revised Statute Section 5-7.5, if any of you want to go look it up. But it basically says the Aloha Spirit is the coordination of mind and heart within each person. It brings each person to the self. Each person must think and emote good feelings to others and in contemplation and presence of the life force. Aloha. And it gives like all these different meanings, but it basically re also requires the court to embody this. And if you look at subsection B, it says in exercising their power on behalf of the people and in fulfillment of their responsibilities, obligations and service to the people, not just the court, sorry, the legislature, the governor, lieutenant governor, executive officers of each department, chief justice, associate justices, judges of each appellate, circuit, and district court may contemplate and reside with the life force and consideration given to the Aloha Spirit. Isn't that crazy? They put life force in the codified Hawaii Vice Statutes. Yeah, it's, on, it's right here. That's cool. It, it is. <laughs> it is. But I mean, so just beyond that, just in life, generally, I've always found that if you lead with Aloha um, and that means not expecting anything in return, giving, caring, leading compassionately. I, I always feel that no matter what, it comes back to me tenfold. For a good chunk of time there, I was a juvenile public defender um, at the family court out in Kapolei. And I tell you, that time there um, really rejuvenated my compassion and rejuvenated my ability um, to do that job. Because at the end of the day, being a public defender is a very thankless job. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody thanks you or, or wants you until they need you. And then once they need you, then it's like, well, why aren't you doing this for me or whatever? But during that time, I had a lot of exposure to young kids, um, young kids who are brown, young kids who are Hawaiian, uh, Polynesian, right? And those are the kids that, that generally came in through the system, right? Either through foster care or just you know, getting into fights or, you know, getting into trouble. And I would always ask them, hey, um, but especially if I saw a Hawaiian kid, because I tell you, you look at that OCCC list of all the inmates or any inmate list, go check out the K's. Do, go check out the last names that start with K. Yeah. You will see every beautiful Hawaiian last name on that list. And it is... It's not a good list. It's not a good list. It's, it's pretty tragic and it's heartbreaking, especially as a Hawaiian, as a defense attorney, um, as somebody who wants to help you have to establish a certain amount of rapport because a lot of them they don't come from good situations they're not going to just trust you because you're an adult you are not an authority figure to them because you're an adult in fact everything that they've been taught up until that point is to buck the system and who the heck are you coming in here telling me what to do i'm doing just fine on my own right so i would always try to try to crack that because if they didn't trust me they wouldn't tell me and i couldn't help them right so I would start with this, my Hawaiians. I would ask them, oh, do you have a Hawaiian name? Or what is your ohana name? What is your family name? Um, you know, where do you come from? And some of them could answer it. Some of them couldn't answer it. And I start with that because as Hawaiians, you know, who our ohana is and what our names mean is, is important because that's our ancestors. That's our kupuna. Those are the people that we are accountable to. And without accountability, you're going to make bad choices, right? Without anybody to hold you accountable um, for the choices that you're making, you're probably not going to make good ones, right? Um, because what comes without accountability? Without accountability comes, you know, you want to bring pride to your family name. You want to bring, you know, just you want to bring good things. You don't want to bring shame and harm. So ultimately, you know, I think about my ohana when I make decisions and I, I'm so thankful that that's the way that I was brought up. I'm so thankful that that's what my parents instilled in me. I'm so thankful that that's what Kamehameha instilled in me. Because every decision, every question, everything I, I do, it always circles back to that. It circles back to who am I accountable to? And I try to make the right decision. I would ask them, who's your family? And if they couldn't answer me, I would ask them, what's your name? And did they, I was like, what does it mean? 
And if they didn't know, I would help them, you know, translate what their name was, right? And at the end of the day, if they didn't have any of those things, I said, look, fine, we start now. I am Hawaiian. You are Hawaiian. You are my community. I am yours. So from now on, you are accountable to me. I am accountable to you. Let's start there. And so that always, I always felt that, I don't know, I don't know how much they took from it, but you know, I, I still would keep in touch with some of them afterwards, right? Or I would get them on a different case and they would look at me, they'd see me walk into the courtroom and they'd be like, oh, they'd hang their head low, right? So I knew I made some kind of impact, um, but definitely that helped to recalibrate me when I went back to representing the adults because at the end of the day, you know, we, we, we treat adults and children differently within the legal system, but also just in life, right? You expect adults to make better choices. You also expect them to be in control and, you know, to have, you're not as likely to let an adult slide for making a bad choice, right? But when I got back to um, representing the adults after having spent so much time with the kids, I realized, you know, these adults are just big kids. They didn't have a lot of them. The reason why they're here, the reason why they're my client, the reason why they're screwing up and making stupid choices um, and, you know, doing things that are hurtful to our community is they didn't have a foundation. They're that kid. They're that kid who just got older, right? Just got bigger, but still didn't have anybody helping them along the way or giving them some kind of compass so they could point it in the right direction to be successful. It's get very taxing, right? When you're trying to help somebody and they can't get out of their own way but it helped me to be there and sometimes that's what they needed was just someone to believe in them um even if i didn't believe in them it was someone to be there to constantly advocate for them you know my thought process is wait if somebody's in prison there's three branches of government that put them in prison mm -hmm. the legislative branch made the laws the executive branch arrested the person, charged a person, and the judicial branch sentenced them. Right. So all three branches of government put that person behind bars. It's, it's not just the police officer's fault. In order to solve a problem like this, it requires a collective lifting up, right? A collective, and you start with education. You start with social programs that are going to expose kids who might not otherwise be exposed to different programs yeah. and to elevate themselves. Um, but how do you do that in a way, I mean, I, I don't find it to be very helpful to point fingers at everybody, to no. blame. I'm more solution oriented. Like, okay, we've identified a problem. How the heck do we fix it, right? But what can you do on a daily basis yourself, right? So I've carved out this, I guess not a niche, but I've carved out this thing that I can do every day, right? I can show up. I can help people who are in that position. I can do what I can to educate them. I can do what I can in, with a kid like that to give him some kind of anchor, right? To give him something that, you know, you're not out here alone. You know, you, you look around and you might not have, or you might not, you might not have stuff. You might not have family or whatever, but you've got me. <sighs> Just everybody hang in there, right? This, this world lately has been kind of crazy with COVID and, you know, I'm a working career mom with three kids at home and distance learning. So, you know, one step, one foot in front of the other and we'll get through it. So hang in there, everybody. <laughs>